Well, he will be key for the Buckeyes. You know, he's in the starting lineup. Who else? Here are the other nine on the side of both teams. And, you know, for Rutgers, a guy that doesn't start senior Mike Williams, but we just found out a couple of hours ago he's injured. He won't be coming off the bench either. Yeah, and that's key. I, I mean, it's not just the production. It's what he brings emotionally from leadership standpoint. A guy that comes off the bench may be more important than some of the guys that are on the, in the starting lineup. Averages nine points, four rebounds. He has the boot on the leg, a high ankle sprain. They said there's so much blood rushing to his ankle still today that they couldn't even evaluate it. They're going to hope to get a diagnosis tomorrow. And again, from a team standpoint, you just ache for the team. You're making huge steps forward. It just means you got to have other guys step up and play a key role. I also think it means you got to take care of basketball and don't foul. Don't foul. Stay out of foul trouble. So Rutgers coming off the overtime loss against Michigan State on the road. Had a chance to win it. This guy did Sanders in regulation, but missed a shot. Lost it in OT. And Ohio State, many people call the surprise of the conference off to that 5-0 start. Freeman will let it fly, but it's nowhere near. Sean Freeman just 4 of 22 from long range, and it, it showed a little bit on that shot. Look, I was told if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. So I just shut up after that one. <laughs> Freeman, though, averaging 12 points and 8 rebounds. One of the top rebounders in the conference. He's not like he can't shoot. That just came off a little funny. So now Ohio State will try to do better with their first offensive possession. Jay Sean Tate, strong to the basket. Jay Sean Tate uses his body way too well. And Issa Chom is not going to stand a chance if it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to keep him from getting a catch where he can do work around the basket. Tate making his 94th consecutive start in the Buckeye uniform. Sanders leading score, 14 a game over the talented freshman Baker. And there's going to be a whistle that's a foul on Jay Sean Tate. Steve Peichel patrolling the sidelines. And he said before the game, no moral victories. And coaches always say that, but he really believes it. He, he thinks he's building something here. You're, you're laughing. Yeah, I mean, look, there are moral victories. When you play well, you feel good about it. When you play well, you gain momentum. And even in a loss, you can gain momentum. I, I know you want to win the game, and the focus has to be on winning, but you also want to play well. So I do believe there are, to some extent, moral victories. I think Nebraska and Kansas, they lost by one. We can't, a really good Kansas team. I think away, that's a moral victory. Yeah, and I, I think if you had Steve Peichel on the polygraph after that <laughs> Michigan State game, he would say, hey, this is a big building block for yeah, us. It sure is. That's a deep post touch for Caleb Wesson. You cannot let that big fella catch it that deep underneath the basket. The thing is, Ohio State moves the basketball so well side to side. It also doesn't stick. And when the ball doesn't stick, it gives post players opportunities to maintain position. They don't have to continue to fight for it. They maintain position when the ball comes back around. It's just too easy. Mentioned Steve Peichel. There's Chris Holtman after his tenure at Butler coming over first season at Ohio State. And what a start it's been for him. First Big Ten coach to start 5 0 in their first year since Tom Davis way back in 1986 when he was the head coach at Iowa and started 6 0. And he didn't even really expect this. It doesn't mean that you don't want this and won't work for this type of success, but. No, he's patient in the process, and it's hard to believe that it didn't take this long for these guys to really get the system, get the fundamentals, and play so well together. The communication defensively, you see Deshaun Freeman doing work and getting these basket. The communication defensively has been so good for Ohio State. I think that might be one of the most impressive things. That is a better shot for Deshaun Freeman around the basket. Dangerous cross-court skip. Gets to Tate. The southpaw. Here they go back into Wesson. He wants to go one on one. He just faces up. This is off the glass. Caleb Wesson, a freshman. And this man, Geo Baker, a freshman on the other side for Rutgers. Two of the budding stars of the league. He's a chance. I think you've got to find a way. Is this a job? It's a look. 
doesn't get to go. I think you've got to find a way to get Corey Sanders going early. Because I, I think Corey Sanders loses interest if he's not making plays. Open three, Williams, no. Ohio State hit 17 three-pointers last time out against Maryland. And this is where you've got to dig down. You can't allow him to do that work. Well, he missed it, but on the other side, easy lay in for Wesson. He, he missed it because you've got to bring defense over to at least contest the shot. But, again, ISO situations in the post, you've got to get it out of his hands. He's just too strong. Uses his body so well. Deshaun Tate maybe being a little overshadowed by all the hoopla around Kata Bates Diop, and deservedly so for Bates Diop. Deshaun Tate kind of like the Swiss Army knife for this team. Not like he's not used to it. He's been overshadowed his entire career in Ohio State. Yeah, he has, but he has been a good one. And someone that Chris Holman has relied on heavily this year. Wesson trying to show the rain. In and out. Only the ninth three-pointer he's hoisted this year. Splitting the defenders. How about that for Corey Sanders? Uh, he, he makes great highlight plays, but what I like is he used a ball screen in transition, and you got to credit Steve Peichel getting him an opportunity early in this game because, as I said, if he gets opportunities early, he stays interested, especially on the defensive end. Well, he was really interested in that game against Michigan State. He's been over 20 his last two against the Spartans and against the Badgers. Shot clock at seven. Here is the Swiss Army Knife Tate. Some early energy for the Scarlet Knights in their home building. Freeman clearing it out. He wants to take Bates D off instead he kicks it back out high. Sanders, never shot. Missing off the left side. I love that turn. Never shot. <laughs> That's a man that will put it up any time, any place. And if Bates D up. You mentioned getting Corey Sanders going. Obviously, Ohio State needs to get Bates D up. Oh, Ohio State's getting good looks, but they're only getting one look. So you got to credit Rutgers for taking care of rebounding on some of these jump shots that aren't falling. And that is a strength of Rutgers. They don't shoot the ball well, but they defend and rebound well. Baker had it rejected by Bates Dia. In transition, catch and release, C.J. Jackson. How about C.J. Jackson? He comes into college. Everybody talks about how great of a scorer he is. He didn't really score at all last year. He struggled, just couldn't really get things going. No rhythm. Shots not falling. This year, it seems like anything he shoots goes in. Yeah, last year, John, 179 points for him. This year, he's already had 247. That's an improvement. But a long way to go. No answer on the other side for Geo Baker. Over the top for Wesson, and he was being held on to. That's already the second foul on Mamadou Ducour. Early going. Ohio State doubling up Rutgers. It's been what Steve Peichel has built his identity around. Yeah, and I think it's a team that pressures the ball. They don't give you anything easy, but they don't overextend, which means they don't beat themselves. They don't give you anything easy. And I think so far, so good. They haven't been able to score. But holding Ohio State 3 of 10 from the field, I, I can live with that. I think you're forcing tough shots. You've just got to do a better job of defending that post. Maybe keeping the ball out of the post might be the biggest key. Steve Peichel, without the services of Mike Williams, 6'2 guard, the senior from Brooklyn. Mamadou Dupour picked up his second foul before we went to the timeout. And he's over on the bench as well. Bates Diop. Will score this 0 for 2. Offensive rebound, though. Those are hard to come by against Rutgers. However, Ohio State gives it right back. Ohio State likes to throw that skip pass. And from that skip pass, there's just great spacing and a long closeout. So it often leads to easier wide, either a wide open shot, an easy post feed to a player who's in position, or a drive and kick opportunity. First that, one, that one just a little row six, seat seven, actually. <laughs> First turnover of the game for either team. Zuf Mitz has been getting more time off the bench. He has it right now. Doesn't score much. He's strong, good with the ball. 
Five on the shot clock. Baker realizes it. Steps back and fires and buries it. Sometimes it's easier to make a tough shot with the shot clock running down. There's less pressure. I'd rather shoot that than a wide open three with all the time in the world. Think about it. They love the future that Geo Baker has. Well, I think Geo Baker is the future. He is the future of this program. Yes, he's got great class coming in, but it's all going to be around Geo Baker at the point. He's had some freshman moments, though, just one of nine, five points against Michigan State. Can you imagine that in this conference, having a freshman moment? Oh, never. Especially on the road against Michigan State. <laughs> Come on. Look, it, you don't understand what it takes. We talk about the good habits that, that Steve Peichel is trying to bring to this program. It's a challenge to bring that every day, you know, to go to class, to get your classwork done, take tests, you know, handle your stuff on the road. It's a grind. It really is. Candido saw not known much for his offense. Tried to go block to block to Dorson. Tie up. Arrow will send it to Ohio State. I don't think young kids are prepared for the emotional output that, you know, and the mental output that is required to get through their first season of college sports. Uh, really, it's college sports. It's obviously, again, academics. You add that to it. It is a challenge. It really is. So I think the, the freshman wall that gets hit is a combination of both. It's all that's asked of you. You know, academically, and then all that you, you have to put into it as a player. Uh, two very good freshmen between Wesson and Baker on either side here in this one. A couple of substitutions for Chris Holtman. Tate back in there. He goes right to the basket as it's swatted by Sa. That's an offensive foul. Out of control. Cam Williams picks up his first. Rutgers down by one at home. Offense early on was running through him in the post. Yeah, I think it's running through him, but also the way he gets position and maintains position in the post changes how you're able to cover the entire team. You have to be concerned with that entry pass. You have to be concerned with where he's at. If, if your man's playing high side, you've got to protect the back side. I think it's just been a different offense with Caleb Wesson on the bench. His brother Andre is out there defending the ball right now, 24 in the Scarlet jersey. Caleb Wesson's going to be really good, too. I mean, he really reminds me a lot of Jared Sullinger. I think as he continues to develop, proves his fitness even more. And fitness is not just losing weight. Fitness is agility and, and footwork and foot speed, all those things. As he continues to improve, his game is going to develop even more. Officials are getting together right now to determine whether this was a shot clock violation or there was possession. Because there was a different signal between the two officials. How was it a shot clock if it hit the rim? They rule it Ohio State ball, and that gets the 7,000-plus here at Piscataway up in arms a bit. And Steve Peichel up in arms a bit. I'm not really well, sure. I mean, this yeah, hits the rim. There's no way it's a shot clock violation. So. It should have reset. It, yeah, look, They're, the, they're going to take a look at this and realize that the shot clock never reset. It clearly hits the rim. So they do realize that after looking at the monitor, they say jump ball and the possession will be with Rutgers. Fair enough. And now Teddy Valentine going over and explaining that to Steve Peichel. Larry Scarato, Ted Valentine, Kelly Pfeiffer, the three on the whistle tonight. Would you be a good official? No. <laughs> no, I don't envy those guys at all. Anybody that says they would be good is full of it. No. They've never done it. I haven't done it, and I know I'd be terrible. Well, I refereed a bitty ball game once and had parents yelling at me. No, no, no thanks. Fade away shot to Sean Freeman. No. Nice offensive board, though. Shaq Dorson. The big body inside. Theo Baker so dangerous off the dribble. Nice slip and an easy deuce. Eugene Omaruyu. The execution for Rutgers has been there because they're moving the ball side to side. As the ball moves side to side, defense forced to close back out, take that next pass away. 
And Omaruyu just slides under the defense. First lead for Rutgers. Ohio State has missed six of their last seven shots on offense. Lisa Jallo into the game, freshman from Bloomington, Indiana. Up top to Micah Potter, and the sophomore buries it. It's amazing how much a key asset you are if you're a five-man that can shoot the basketball, but also move the basketball. If you can shoot it and move it, it is really hard to play position defense, especially with bigs. Well, Potter averages right around three points a game, but he got it there in one fell swoop. Freeman off the hesitation. Ripped down by Jay Sean Tate. So you're saying he's done? I think he's got a little something. Maybe there. he's got more. <laughs> it's only the second three-pointer he's hit all year. But as you said, he can shoot it. There's a bad pass by Tate to nobody. When Rutgers moves the basketball and they cut hard, they get opportunities. It's just putting pressure on the defensive ball moves. Keep an eye. Two men go with one just to break down communication-wise, and you get an opportunity. Good patience by Omaru, just under the basket. I love seeing the one guys use the basket as an extra defender. Why? Maybe that's because I'm 5'10". I was going to say, you know, some, other, <laughs> some of these guys out here don't really need it. I sure did. Omaru, he doesn't really need it, but it's a smart play. You want to go earn two at the foul line, or you want to just get an easy two by using the basket to protect yourself and the ball. Sanders. Athletic move to get there, and then a wild shot. You know, Sanders is funny because you got to live with some of that. That's right? part of what makes him good. He doesn't go off and keep you in the game against Michigan State if, if he doesn't have that little chip in him. He put up 23 shots against Michigan State, 19 against Wisconsin. Wesson that time off the side of the backboard. He just lost position there. I mean, he was in he was in a good spot to make a play. He just didn't realize where he was in terms of where the basket was. Omaruyi, blocking foul. Jay Sean Tate thought he had taken a charge successfully. I actually like, I, I like the no call in this case. I mean, it, he did lean into it, and it does give the defense a bit of an advantage. That's not bad. A lot of contact. That's the second. Hello, I'm saying I like the no call. Fat chance, man. Something's getting, the whistle's getting blown. It always is, but I'm with you. Sometimes don't you think the officials, and look, they're told yeah. to call that, but sometimes could just say, you know what, that's nothing. It's not a foul well, either there, way. There's contact in the game of basketball. Some contact is, is strictly to gain an advantage. That's what always deserves a whistle. If you're doing something to gain an advantage, this is two guys that are, I felt like both of them are in pretty good position. Yeah, let it go. I think the only way is if you lose the basketball, then I'd blow the whistle. Yeah. But, I mean, again, the gray area is not accepted in this profession. Issa Chom, the skinny, tall drink of water. He can shoot it from the outside. Rutgers fans letting him know the shot clock is late here, so Baker rises and then air balls it. Seems like Ohio State's getting settled in defensively. Even the last play where Jay Sean Tate picked up the foul, he was in position outside of the paint. You just got to think at some point this Ohio State team is going to settle in. It's against Michigan State. Michigan State made a great run, and next thing you know, Ohio State's rolling. And it was not a great start for Ohio State at home against Maryland on Thursday before they just absolutely blew the Terps out of the water. That's the fourth turnover for Ohio State. Well, Ohio State's trying to get the ball into Caleb Weston, and they're using Kata Bates Diop as the high low guy. So Deshaun Freeman's got to come with him. But you can't force it if it's not there. Sometimes moving the ball to the other side of the floor and getting it back is the way to, is the way to enter the post. With one turnover for Rutgers, and that's what an area that they're very good. Plus 4.4 in turnover margin. Pops of the conference. Deshaun Freeman a little dipsy do, but he can't finish. Andrew Dockett, who had 11 points last game, brought it up. Crowd wanted to travel. Kata Bates Diop is 0 of 4 from the field. Yeah, they've done a great job playing Kata Bates Diop, but they've also done a great job of rebounding missed shots. What good is a good defensive possession if you don't get the rebound? Freeman. One-on-one -on -one with Andre Weston. Bates Diop jarred it free. 
And Wesson found his brother, Caleb. Now base Diop through traffic. That didn't take too long. He's going to find his opportunities. You just have to find a way to get the ball out of his hands. It's, it's disrupting what he wants to do in Andrew Dockage. Speaking of disrupting, got it up there with a left hand and scored it. Timeout, Rutgers. It's amazing how quickly things turn around. It's Kata Bates, Diop, transition, getting out with the steal. It's been tough going for him so far, but when he gets things going in transition, it's easy. Then Andrew Dock is doing what he's been able to do pretty much all season for this team. Create opportunity. Michigan. You know what? Take the points off the board. I think it's, it's a sign of what he's brought to this program, but what he really brings is leadership and energy. Regardless of whether he plays five minutes or 25 minutes, he brings great energy and leadership to this team. And... He's done a bit of everything right. He's played great defense. He communicates really well. He, he said he brings life and energy to a team that last year was kind of lifeless at times. He was recruited by Chris Holtman when Chris Holtman was at Gardner-Webb before Butler. And then when he was the head coach at Butler, Chris Holtman, he used to spend every Wednesday on Dan Dockage's radio talk <laughs> show in Indianapolis. And that, of course, is the father of Andrew Dockage. So a relationship was formed. He ends up at Ohio State for his final season. And here he is on a leak out. Taking it up over Baker, but he cannot get it to go. That's inside. Omaruyi, no, but contact. Back to that point, though. I think so many people talk about a team that's got good energy, good chemistry. Well, it starts with guys like Andrew Dodge. It really does. Guys who have a sense of urgency about what they want to accomplish this year, and it's win. It's make this team better in some way or another. They needed a backup point guard. You've got it. But you've also got that guy in the locker room that can bring guys together. You need that. I think we overuse the term glue guy. But what does a glue guy do if not bring the team together? And that's not just done on the basketball court. It's done in the locker room. It's done socially. So you've got to find those guys. One way or another, you've got to find them. Yeah, that veteran presence. And they say, by all accounts, great kid. And has become a real leader. And now an asset out on the floor. I've seen a lot of really good basketball teams. Guys with, you know, 10 top 25 players from their high school days. And they're terrible because they have no chemistry. Chemistry is one of the most important things you can have as a team. And you build good culture to hopefully have good chemistry. Approaching six to play in the first half. Ohio State has had that 7-0 run streak snapped by the free throws from Omaruyi. And then they start a new streak. Kata Bates, Diop from downtown. You sleep on that back cut from Andrew Dockage. Why? Because he cut hard. And it, and it froze Omaruyi just long enough for Kata Bates, Diop to get a look. Diop has five. The star on the other end is Sanders off the heel. Bates Diop one more time. Yes! And another timeout from Steve Peichel. Those aren't the looks that you want to give the Big Ten leading score. 13-2 run. Dockage cuts hard to the basket, and when you cut hard, you put pressure on the defense. Here's hard back cut. Omaru, he freezes just enough, loses sight of his man, which is probably one of the best players in, in the country right now. And again, just losing sight, miscommunication. You got to know who you're covering at all times. Base Diop gets going, you got problems. He did two three pointers. He shoots at a 42% clip from outside the arc. I mean, the 13-2 scoring run, he kind of expected that. The second Rutgers starts to get frustrated a little bit on the offensive end, you lose discipline on the defensive end. And discipline is awareness. You know, who am I covering? What, what are my responsibilities here? Steve Peichel looking for answers. Ohio State started out 4 of 16, but since then they've hit four of their last five shots. You also look at that first shot for Kata Bates Diop. It's the hard cut. For Dockage cutting back to the basket, but it's set in a screen. If you want to get open, set a screen. Bagging off Mensa. 
Lisa Chom needs some trouble. Well, it's in trouble now. He does find Freeman. And it's blocked by Bates Diop. They did reset the shot clock, though. The ball hit the rim. Chom known for his outside shot working inside. Keeps the possession alive for Sanders, but nothing dropping right now for the Scarlet Knights. Well, just not getting good looks. And the Ohio State defense has been in position. Why not? Ohio State defense has been in position. You've got to move the basketball to get the defense scrambling, get the defense chasing. You are easy to defend if you allow a defense to stay in position. They're dictating what you're doing as an offense. Rutgers has now missed their last 10 shots. Side. Here's the big boy, Caleb Wesson. And they do such a good job of clearing and letting him do work. And that is going to be the third foul on Mamadou Ducor. He was on the bench for a while with two, comes back in and picks up that third. Big, big defenders need to play defense early. And by playing defense early, it means you need to do the work before he gets the catch. Because Caleb Wesson's done a great job of maintaining position in the post as the ball comes his way. It's an easy pass inside. Great job of vacating the area by everyone else on the floor that's wearing a red jersey. And a one-on-one -on -one opportunity in the post. He's got to get these foul shots to go. But back to the bench for Decor. Is it Scarlet? Is someone going to yell at me? For... What is Ohio State's red? Scarlet. Scarlet, right? You'll probably get some tweets. What is it at, at John at BTN John Crispin? I just want to make sure at everyone Brandon has it. Galvin. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's gone. The shooting woes, though, for Rutgers have been there all season long. Try to rectify that here. Missed their last 10, but they're shooting at 41% as a team on the season, under 30% from outside the arc. No doubt they're Achilles' heel. Well, some of the tough times is you're in tough games when guys like Corey Sanders make big shots, tough shots, and you've got to be in games against high-level competition by getting yourself easy looks, by sharing the basketball. It's a decent look, although Freeman, he said it earlier, that's not his strength. Goes over the top of the backboard, and we've hit our under four media timeout. Rutgers did a fantastic job early in this game of limiting Kata Bates Diop, but the awareness started to break down and Bates Diop started to get going. It was the layup in transition, two threes, and when he gets going, it just spaces out the defense. It's going to create opportunities for drives, kicks. Just too easy when Kata Bates Diop gets going. Big 10 leading score, along with three other very good ones in Carr, Murphy, and Edwards. But right now, Bates Diop, a lot of people think, in that driver's seat, although it's early, the conference player of the year. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, particularly because of the expectations or lack there, there, thereof that we had for Ohio State. I'm guilty of that as anybody else. But it's hard to imagine that you can come in in year one and turn things around so drastically. It's not just, you know, bringing talent in. Oh, well, we got enough talent to win. No, you got to get them to play well together. You got to get them to buy into a system. Trust you, trust themselves, trust one another. It's a lot that goes into it. Rutgers goes zone there. Offensive rebound. There you go. That's the problem. You say it all yep. the time with the zone. Zone, you are not covering a man. You're covering an area. And when you have guys that are flashing that low post area, they always put themselves in position to get an offensive rebound, not being checked out by an individual. And it was the freshman, Kyle Young, with the bucket. He had not scored in the last five games for the field. Sanders blowing by Dockage, but Dockage poked it free. It's like such a bad move. The slower I got, the more I found that did that. I'm just like, pick I'm the pocket from behind. Look, I'm not going to stop this dude. He's got me beat, so let me just try to pick his pocket on the way by. That's the YMCA move, right? When, you, when your playing days are over. Freeman has to put it up into the hands of Kyle Young. Streak continues 12 straight missed shots for Rutgers. And an easy deuce inside. Nice pass from Jackson to Young. We think of defensive pressure as disruptive, but defensive positioning is as disruptive, if not more. You take away all your options, and you're forced to move the basketball, play with counters, make reads, when the defense is always in position. 18-2 is the run right now for Ohio State. 
this again. They're working this shot clock late, but failing them out, Corey Sanders. Well, Corey Sanders had room to work. He actually had space. He still was forced to make a tough shot, though. First field goal since the 10-46 mark right there for the home team. That's the thing. It's not just that Ohio State's winning. It's how they're doing. They're just so disciplined. Dockage, he hit three of those against Maryland. They go back to simplifying things. You know, Chris Holtman takes over. Does he come in and say, this is who we're going to be 10 years from now, so let's be that team now? No, he says, look, this is what I want to build here. So it takes trusting in this process. You know, the Philly people appreciate that. Trusting the process. Uh, but it does. It takes, you know, trusting that building a foundation is going to get you to where you want to go. And I think the hardest thing about that is getting some of these seniors and upperclassmen to buy into it. Because when you say process, it doesn't mean now. And I think that's a really tough thing to get old guys to buy into, but Chris Holtman's got it. Don't forget, coming up State Farm Halftime Report. Mike Hall, Mike DeCorsi, Stephen Bardo back in Chicago. Cam Williams into the game for Ohio State. And it's shoot around. Chris Holtman and a couple of the assistants were telling us some of the people in Columbus were talking about this year kind of being, well, rebuilding your yada, yada, yada. They said, no, no, we got some of those seniors who expect to win that they don't want to go out on a rebuilding year. Yeah, and they said that right off the bat. He said, look, I look at Jay Shante, I look at Twitter base D off, and I go, look, oh, and Cam Williams, like, well, we can win right now. There's no reason why we can't win right now. I don't think we should approach the season as if it's just a rebuilding year. It may very well be in some ways because you're rebuilding something new, but you're, you're putting the foundation in first. Foul is called on C.J. Jackson. He thought he got all ball. If the foul was on C.J. Jackson, he's right. He did get all ball. If anything, let me see who it was. Oh, they got Williams. You're it's right. It's got to be on Williams. Yep. I mean, C.J. Jackson was all over the basketball in that one. Two hands on the back. Yep. Freedom of movement, no touchy, whatever you want to call it. Well, if it is a rebuilding year, it's a heck of a rebuilding year for Ohio State. No, and I always think... Oh, that was a near travel by Bates Dia. That's always an interesting one, too, rebuilding year. With a new coach, it's a building year. And it's not a rebuilding year. You know, very... Archie Miller isn't just rebuilding what whoever knows Bobby Knight and everybody else who's coached there done. No, I mean, there's tradition there that helps. How about that? On the baseline of the slam for base D -op. I mean, you're building your own program there within an institution that has tradition. And yes, you've got a foundation in place, but it's a completely different system. It's a different way of going about your business. Third three-pointer the three that has put up tonight. He's missed all of them. Young saved it, but he threw it to the wrong man, Jack Dorson. He knew he did something silly there, too. Last thing he was supposed to do. T.J. Jackson gets a look. Got it off. Good execution. Doesn't drop, but still Ohio State holds Rutgers to 15 points. Fewest amount that they've had in a half this season. Well, you got to credit the defense. Again, the position and the discipline defensively for Ohio State is going to be what keeps them at the top of the standings in Big Ten play. Stay tuned. State Farm Halftime Report coming up. Mike Hall, Stephen Bardo, Mike DeCorsi. They'll recap the first half and look back at a full weekend of Big Ten action next after this from Chicago. Just in case something went down. <laughs> I can barely sit in one chair, yeah. let alone stand on seven. Hello, everybody, with John Crispin. I'm Brandon God. So a tough first half offensively for Rutgers. They were 6 of 31 from the floor. Yeah, tough first half offensively, but you've got to credit off Ohio State for the way they play defense. They don't disrupt with pressure, but they're always in position, and they take you out of everything that you want to do. For Rutgers, you got to move the basketball. you got to set screens. you got to cut hard because defensively, Ohio State is disciplined. They're always in position and I think that's the credit to this coaching staff the coaching staff has got these guys playing at a high level on both ends dialed into a simple foundationally principle principle based offense and defense 
Uh, Chris Holtman and company put up 91 points in their Thursday win over Maryland. But they're doing it on the other side here tonight. Still 20 more minutes from Piscataway. Settle in. You know, and it's not that you're being out schemed. That's the thing. Like, it's not as if uh, the specific plays work so much better against Michigan State. And that's how they will win. Wow, they're just disciplined. They're dialed in. They're patient. They're poised on both ends of the floor. And there's no time wasted. Go at the guy with three fouls. Yep. And there you go with patience and poise from the young freshman. Wesson now has six points. But the key there is getting out of the way if you're not the guy with the basketball. And so you can give your teammate an opportunity to make a play. Remember, Rutgers battled back from down 12 at Michigan State to force overtime earlier this week. And the block by Kata Bates Diop. And now he'll try to hit from the top of the arc. Offensive rebound, though, on the tap out from Wesson. Everything right now going in favor of the Buckeyes. Jay John Tate, he is strong for a 6-4 body. There's just nothing you can do about that if he gets position on you and there's no one there to help. So Steve Peichel says, well, I've seen enough. Now we're down 17. He burns a timeout. Keeps Minnesota's season alive. <laughs> How about that reaction? That's great. <laughs> Oh, but let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Conference news and notes while we talk round ball. Purdue, they're still rolling. I think they're the best team in the country. Uh, and they may not finish country. the number one in the country, but I think right now they're playing better than anybody in the country, and they're as complete as anybody in the country. And that Michigan team, how about it? John Beeline doing one heck of a job. I, I did not think that he'd have this team where they're at right now. Maybe late in the season, yes. But he's got the point guard play figured out with Xavier Simpson and the team's playing at a high level. And then Robert Johnson with a great game against Northwestern. He looks like Robert Johnson again. <laughs> at Northwestern, they're struggling. Of course, Minnesota having their issues. They'll be playing tomorrow night at Penn State right here on BTN. It just shows you, you just simply can't predict what's going to happen, particularly in this conference. I, mean, I thought Northwestern would follow it up. Same, basically the same team from last year. Yes, different where you're playing home games basically on the road in Rosemont. But an experienced team just can't figure it out. Baker got it right back after having it rejected. In Minnesota, you just can't bank on those things happening. Boy, Rutgers cannot buy a basket. They haven't got an easy look. It's frustrating. It's demoralizing. And if you do get easy opportunities, you've got to capitalize. Data Bates Diop has four blocks. And Freeman fell, so Bates Diop gets great position. And Ohio State starting to run away from Rutgers here. Sanders. Frustrating shot, and that leads to a run out for C.J. Jackson. No, but the putback, yes, for Jay Sean Tate. I, mean, I got to say, this Ohio State team, again, there's, there's nothing in particular that you look at. I, I say outside of Katie bates Diop, which he's a real talent. He's an NBA-level talent. I think now that he's figured that out, he's playing at a high level. There's nothing in particular that they're doing that you would say, oh, that's going to be really hard to stop. They just play great defense. They share the basketball. They move hard. They cut hard. They make good passes. They don't turn it over. Do all the things right. Five rejections now for Bates Diop after the block on the other end. Knocked out. It will stay with Ohio State here. 22 to shoot. Back to the first half, though. This is a 28-6 run, all told, for the Buckeyes. Uh, that's just, that's impressive. 5-0 start for Chris Holtman's crew. First time they've been 5-0 in league play since 2011. Wow. The ball keeps rolling with Cam Williams. And Cam Williams has changed his game, too. I mean, he's bought into being a better defender. And to say he struggled defensively is more as if he just didn't want to play defense. I get it. He's a bucket guy. But if you want to play significant minutes and have a significant role in this team, which you know, now you want to make sure you have an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, yeah, you can play defense. 
Three to shoot, job hoists it. One of 11 from long range, six of 37 from the field for Rutgers. Deshaun Tate, nice kick. Ohio State, they just look so confident. Sue Minson with a block out. Uh, they're not pressing in any way, and I don't mean pressing on defense. I, I just mean they, they don't force anything. They don't rush anything. There's trust on both sides of the floor. And you're able to play defense a certain way because you trust where your help is. They also, they don't overhelp. They, they, they don't over-rotate. And that is a key to being in position. When you over-rotate, when you scramble too much, when you over-help, when you don't need to help as much, you put yourself in a scramble situation. And the NBA guys do it really well. They scramble out of double teams so well they figure it out. College guys aren't as good. These guys have just been in position the entire day, and it's frustrating for Rutgers because you're not getting anything easy. And here's what I don't know. If you're Steve Peichel, look, you're going to keep coaching. You're not giving up. This game's not over. But where do you turn when you just can't hit shots and get anything going? Oh, wow. Well, I want to find somebody that wants to go out there and compete. I mean, you look at the bench right now, and they do. They look dejected. You can't have that. You've got to look down the bench and say, just go out and compete. It, this is not about, oh, we got to got to find a way to cut into this league. Just go compete. That's all I'm asking for. Doesn't mean you're okay with losing, but, but you're going to learn a lot more about your guys when they compete. Yeah, right? his, his teams have competed. Yeah, but I, I'd say Suf Mensa right now. He's competing. He's fighting for rebounds. He's trying to get a loose ball, trying to pick up a steal, and, and that's what you're looking for right now. I know that sounds defeatist, but it's not. You learn a lot about your guys and how they handle struggles and adversity. Well, so far through six games of Big Ten play, this being the sixth, nobody has had a tougher schedule than Buckley. A one and four with a record, but they have been there in a lot of them. There's an easy bucket inside Caleb Wesson. Caleb Wesson just holds his position. Again, doesn't rush it. Ball comes his way great. If not, he's there to get a rebound. They were saying one of the biggest things that has helped Caleb Wesson this year is that sometimes in practice he gets to go against Greg Oden, the number one <laughs> overall draft pick in 2007, who's a student assistant coach back getting his degree. Well, how about the fact that Greg Oden was out there walking through, doing walkthrough, and I forget who he was at the moment. He was Mamadou Ducour. Mamadou Ducour, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just looked up, I looked at you, it's like the number one overall draft pick is out there on the floor right now on the scout team. They say he's great for the locker room, he's great for these guys, he's got great energy, he's positive. You know, and I think there's a humility there that helps you uh, as a team. He's the number one overall draft pick. There's no one on this floor right now who's going to be the number one overall draft pick. If you've got that in your locker room, there you go, finally break it. Asa John gets himself a basket to go. And I think there, there's humility gained. There's perspective gained from seeing that. This is a guy who's playing the piano on the ESPYs with Justin Timberlake. He did it all. He, he had commercials. I mean, this guy really had it all. So I think there's good perspective gains seeing that. The hard work, the fact that he's coming back to school to finish his degree. There's a lot of perspective gain there. You saw him on the end of the bench. He does travel with the team. As a promise to his mother that he would finish his degree. He's got about three semesters left. He's a student assistant coach and back finishing. As we... Hit the timeout, Greg Oden. He has to like what he's seeing. He's got you beat. He was one of the best things that came out of that Michigan State game. The fact that you could throw the ball inside against Michigan State and let a man do work. 8-7. And earlier we talked about young guys having freshman moments. He really hasn't had many. His season low in points this year yeah. is 7. Season low in minutes, 17. That's consistency. I, but I think that comes back to leadership. You got great leadership on this team. And you don't really have that guy's fearless turnover. You don't have that guy that's a grab teammates by the throat type of leader. But there's a lot of lead by example kind of guys. I mean, you look at Jay Sean Tate, he plays harder than anybody in the conference. That's a lead by example. Dockett's got all the experience in the world. He's been a part of. You know, what the, what Dockage went through last year with the plane crash and then coming in and, and being a part of that team that wins the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Again, great perspective from this group. Dockage back out there this time, though, with Williams getting fouled and hitting the three to add insult to injury. 
This is all Ohio State, 47 to 18. I, I mean, it's, I can't say enough. It's just been impressive. They screen, and setting the screen is key. But what's even more important is the fact that the screener gets set and doesn't move. How many times have we seen moving screens? And that goes to the discipline, the attention to detail that gets you this type of lead. And that lead is 30. What were they up 25 against Michigan State? Yeah, I mean, it, it has been impressive sequence after impressive sequence. And I kind of keep waiting for Ohio State to have that game where they're just not right. And, and I'm sure they're not going to run yeah. the table, but boy, they've looked consistent. You know, that's the funny thing. You say, I'm sure they're not going to run the table, but when you watch them, you go, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they're just so disciplined. There is nothing that, and I think that's what allows you to establish depth, too. If there's nothing in particular, that's, I guess, Jay Sean Tate, Kata Bates, Dia, different story. I mean, those guys are our key players, but if you have guys coming off the bench and they fit into what needs to be done based on the principles of a defense and the offense, the, the simplistic ideals of the offense, there's not too many sets, there, but there are actions, and then there's a read and react, with, react within those actions. If the guys coming off the bench get that, they're going to have just as much success. It, maybe not as much as Katie, uh, Katie Bates, Diop, and Jay Sean Tate, but they're going to be effective, and I think that's how you develop a bench. They whistled that on Andrew Dockage. Okay, his second personal foul ball stays with Rutgers. Baker. There you go. Baker knocking down the three. Just the eighth field goal tonight for the Scarlet Knights. Good look, good read. I mean, Geo Baker makes the read. Dockage tried to go underneath that. He's just got a trail tight. But you're right. I said they wouldn't run the table. Who knows? I don't think it's likely, but the way they're playing and look Michigan State with the two losses who knows and look, there's still room for improvement this Jow is a guy he's going to improve he will improve I mean he's a guy a ton of upside he can play one through three he's going to continue to improve as he gets comfortable and as his role I don't want to say it's, it's diminished but as it gets more and more simplified for him I think he's going to improve and next thing you know you got eight nine ten guys you can trust to put on the floor Rutgers is showing some signs of life. A couple of straight baskets. And they'll have the ball. So Purdue and Ohio State, a couple of game lead on Michigan State and Come Michigan. On. How's Michigan and Ohio State not a top 25 team? And I'm the guy that says it's total nonsense anyway, top 25. <laughs> I mean, who really gives a rip? We know there's going to be NCAA tournament teams, but I just think those teams need to get credit for how not just competitive but how good they've been at what they do also indiana with a win against northwestern they're also four and two in big ten play job well three straight made field goals for rutgers oh look, missed shots is contagious bad energy is contagious but so are made shots and positive energy so far the past few possessions have been good and it looks like the uh, starters are coming back in the game for Ohio State. Uh, eight straight points, and Chris Holtman said, okay, seen enough. And this bump will allow them to come back onto the floor. But first, media timeout. Ohio State was up 30. Now it's 22. Insurance safe, sound, secure for over 100 years. Visit autoowners.com. Been such a tough start to conference play for Rutgers. It hasn't gotten any easier tonight. Down 22 to Ohio State. But they played Michigan State twice. And remember, they played Minnesota when Minnesota was at full strength. And now without Mike Williams, you can't say enough about what that means to this team. Senior leader, the experience he brings, but also the fact that he comes off the bench. It's added depth. It's not a let up when a guy comes off the bench. It's actually a bit of, bit of a pick me up. Again, they're going to get that ankle diagnosed tomorrow. There was so much blood and swelling around the ankle of Mike Williams that they couldn't examine it today. They just know that he's on the bench with a boot on that leg. Fourth foul on Jay Sean Tate. Uh, Steve Pike was saying, too, it's like you, you just ache for a kid when you see that happen. How much he's put into this program, how much he's gone through in his time here. They just made the Dean's list. I mean, all the things he's doing to take care of business and just a freak accident it happens in practice it's it's sports it's just the way it goes 
Dockage trying to save it. Saves it to Chom. Well, Rutgers on a mini 8 0 run here. Well, I believe they're going to reset the yeah, shot. They're going to reset that saying that Dockage's throw was possession. Yeah, that's exactly what Larry Scarato is saying. I was just trying to read hand, hand gestures. By the way, hat tip to Larry Scarato retired yes. from service, right? 25 years in the police department. I believe in Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken, see what Baker gets to go. You, got, you don't understand with officials. Everybody hates officials. A lot of these guys have normal jobs, man, real jobs. They get yelled at in their real job, then they come get yelled at in this. But you got to think he's got great perspective dealing with what you deal with in law enforcement. And, Getting yelled at by guys like Tom Izzo and everybody else in the game. <laughs> David Bates, Diop cannot stop the 10-0 run, so hold the phone here. Rutgers making the charge. Baker, once again. Big. Signs of life. Again, that's what you're looking for if you're Steve Peichel. Who's going to compete? It just takes a couple opportunities, and now the defense is dialed in. They were down 30. The crowd's back in it. Ohio State turned into the young buck. And he delivers. That's good defense. I think at some point you've got to force the ball back out. You've got to get the ball back out. It can't be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Baker, he's got the hot hand. Here he goes again. Offensive rebound. The foul is going to go on Ohio State's Caleb Weston. Yeah, there's something about a guy that loses a ton of weight and was able to function and play at a high level with all that weight. Weston loses a bunch of weight. He's already got great footwork. He's won with good footwork and skill around the basket. As the fitness improves, like Biggie Swanigan last year, the past couple of years, I should say, you see how the game was there because he had to win with fundamentals. Now, I think as that fitness improves, he's going to get that much better. That last possession around the post, though, great footwork. Put him in double figures with 10. He's a charm. He's a good outside shooter. Rutgers have made their last five shots before that possession. And you got to think Ohio State's going to be patient here. Right? They're in no rush to get shots up. They're going to attack. If the opportunity's there. They're certainly going to take it. But they're not just going to throw up bad shots. I mean, you look at the experience on the floor. Katie Bates, the uh, Andrew Dockers. Guys have been around forever, really. C.J. Jackson, the junior, in and out. I also think with Bates Diop having to sit out, you learn so much about the game when you sit out. Game seems to slow down, and I think that helped in his development. Fadeaway jump shot, good. Corey Sanders doesn't need much space. If you gave that dude a wide open three, I bet he misses it. If you let him <laughs> mix you up back and forth and take a fadeaway three, I bet he makes it. He had a similar shot like the one he just hit to try to win the game yep. at Michigan State in regulation, but it rimmed off. And then they would fall by four in overtime. There's a tough finish for C.J. Jackson. Good balance, good sit down. But attacking the paint because of all the pressure applied, trying to take the ball or keep the ball from, the, from a post-entry pass. Sometimes you overcommit to disallowing that pass that you end up giving up a drive. That's going to be a foul on the dribble handoff every time. Yeah, that's one that's being called more this year. And Rutgers finally getting things going offensively. I, I said, Corey Sanders, I mean, he'd rather do this, mix you up back and forth, take that shot, then get a wide open one. And then C.J. Jackson, again, you're so worried about the post feed. You get high hands, but it also means you get up on your toes if you're Corey Sanders. Up on your toes means you're not in a stance, you're not in a position to get a stop. C.J. Jackson able to get to the paint. Jackson has five. Bates Diop leading all scores with 14. Pressure being extended. But it just has felt like a different Rutgers team these last five minutes. Well, I give him credit for fighting, too. I mean, this game was getting ugly there for a while. 15 points at the half. 
But they've continued to fight, and now they're really trying to make a game of this. Bates Diop, he has something to say about that, but it rolls around and off. Yes, I said, I mean, Suf Mensa in this game, he's going to have to play a more significant role with Mike Wade as being out. Baker, no, and then stepping on the end line, Candido Sa. So Ohio State have the basketball when we return to Piscataway. So it's 52 to 34. Scarlet Knights down by 18. And since that very, very cold start, Rutgers six of nine. Dude, I'm not even listening to you, man. Don't stop believing's on right now. Is that really changing anything? Do you ever listen to me? No, I'm not a great listener. <laughs> He's John <laughs> Christman. I'm Brandon Gordon. And coming up, you'll see some other guys. Mike Hall, Mike DeCourcy, Stephen Bardo discussing the hottest topics in college basketball, Big Ten basketball and beyond. Presented by the Motorist Insurance Group after the game right here on BTN. Look, when the Eagles... I listen to yeah, you. Thank I you. want you to know. I do listen. Um, when, when the Eagles had, what was it, fourth down, they got to get a stop yesterday, and they came out and played the Rocky music? If you didn't get pumped up, you clearly don't like the Eagles, but you might want to check for a pulse. And if <laughs> Don't Stop Believing plays, and you don't get up a little bit off your seat... Well, they're sending a message to their saying, crowd here that this one isn't over yet. Look, the team's sending a message. They fought back. And regardless of what happens in this game, they showed a lot of fight. They showed grit. You want to see that, but you're also playing without Mike Williams. Uh, you don't have that off the bench. He's one of your best rebounders, if anything else. Crafty move by Bates Diop. Able to draw the contact from Freeman. I don't even recognize Bates Diop sometimes because of how much better he is, not only in, in terms of his game, but his body language. And I think that's got to be said uh, about some of the guys that were last year that just had such bad body language, bad energy, zero chemistry on the team. And so many people say, well, what about that? What was that doing? Look, you can't predict what certain players are going to be like in terms of the chemistry of the team or whether a guy's going to bring great energy. You can't predict those things all the time. But I think it's something you've got to look at. If you're a coach building a program, you've got to look at what kind of energy this guy brings. Does he fit not only in the system, that, but to in who I am and, and who my team is? Do, does he fit? And I think you see that Kata Bates Diop is 10 times better because the energy of this team is better. Foul. It's one and one. Rutgers is now in the bonus. Well, it's a great article this morning in the Columbus Dispatch by Adam Jardy, beat writer for Ohio State, on the journey that Bates Diop has been on. Sophomore was really the sophomore year really derailed by mono last year, the stress fracture. His brother Kai last year collapsed at practice. High school basketball player had to be brought back by a defibrillator. So he has been through a lot. And, and again, emotionally, you may not see it. You know, they always say still waters run deep. The guy's competitive. You know, you can't compete if you're not like that. If there are emotions in there that drive you. So he's clearly driven. You don't come back from injury without all that, too. It takes a lot to come back from injury. Rehab, patience, all that stuff. Drive. You gotta be passionate about getting better every day. And that's he's clearly done that. Suf Mensa was called for the foul, and that sent C.J. Jackson to the line. Those last three games for Bates, Diop, 85 points. And the last Buckeye to score 25-plus in three straight games. Yes, Michael Red, all the way back in 1998. That, that was actually a three-game st stretch that spanned two seasons for Michael Red. Man, I got bad memories about Michael Red my freshman year. Welcome to the Big Ten, son. Well, when you were at Penn State, you... Yeah. We, I mean, we beat him Big Ten tournament somehow. I don't think I did anything, but having to cover him, Scooney Penn... Made me look silly. <laughs> Morris Peterson, A.J. Guyton... Luke Wrecker, all bad words in my vocabulary. <laughs> from names from back in the day. Five to shoot. Here goes Sanders. He realizes the shot clock. It's his time to shine. The bank is open late in Piscataway. Sometimes you need a little luck to get things going. And they've been there. They've competed here in the second as bad as it got. They brought life back into the building. 
Lou Feichel says his teams will always compete for 40 minutes, but that's tough to stop. 17 now for Bates Dion. And the release is so high. He's not a high elevator. He doesn't elevate really high on the jumper, but the release is so high, so he's going to be able to get it off against pretty much anybody in the conference. Dockage. Extra pass into the corner. Offensive board. A nice pass, Wesson to Bates Diop. Uh, I mean, that interior passing, Wesson gets the rebound, Bates Diop gets the catch, keeps the ball high and finishes. You teach big guys how to do this. When the shot goes up, you actually get the rebound, makes the pass, but keep the ball high. Doesn't bring it down, doesn't check it, goes right up, Bates Diop with the finish. I can't say. I mean, I've, it's been so impressive, this Ohio State team. And, you know, some people may say, how could you not see this coming? Yeah, it, it, you know, Chris Holtman didn't see this coming. You know, you, you, you hope that what you do today puts you in a position to win. But you don't bank on it every day when you just got here in June. And you're trying to get concerned with recruiting calls because you're taking over a, a job late. You know, you're, you're worried about whether guys are going to be able to play well together. You, you want to make sure everyone's healthy. You bring Dockett in late. I mean, he's become a key piece on this team. And they had some hiccups non-conference. They didn't just cruise right through Gonzaga. They struggled against him. They lost to Butler, his former place of employment. The losses to Clemson and North Carolina. Understandable, those are good teams. But they've really turned it on in conference play. But I, I think you're building trust not only with one another, but trust in what the coaching staff is telling you they want to do. Trust in the coaching staff in general. Kids don't come into college and say, oh, you're my coach, I trust and fear you. No, they come into college these days and go, why, why, why am I going to listen to you? Uh, that's just the reality of it. I think that's one of the biggest challenges for a coaching staff. So the coaching staff has to show these young guys why they need to buy in. And so part of it is failing a little bit. And I think they did that at times in non-conference play but as they see what makes them successful they buy into it even more and I think the buy-in is there right now and if it's not something wrong with you nice turnaround jump hook by Eugene Omarui he has six that's a good sign because the last five games he's only been averaging about two points and everyone's gonna need to step up a bit as you said earlier with Mike Williams out just stepping up offensively. It's, it's on the defensive end. It's rebounding. Dockage tried to get creative, and then it's thrown away in the corner. A leak out Geo Baker. I don't know that I saw the slam coming. That was nice from the freshman. Got an opposite leg, too. Goofy footed. But pretty. It means if you're right handed, you usually jump off the left leg. Yeah. He took off his right leg, finished with his left. That's not easy to do. Generously listed at 6'4. That might be a high heel. Short from Kate Bates Diop. And here's Baker. This time attacking. Almost had his own miss. And they're going to say it went off of Baker. Geo Baker. I didn't realize he had it either. I mean, as I said, goofy footed. That means if you're right here, you take off your left foot. He takes off of his right leg. Throws it down. Love your why Ohio State showed how you do do it the other day and why West Virginia showed how you don't. And Trey Young is just exploding this year. We're going to talk a lot about him, too. For now, back out to John and Brandon. All right, thanks, Mike. Time for the game reset. Sponsored by SoFi Rethinking Personal Finance. Ohio State up 60 to 41 as we take a look at tonight's auto owners game leaders. Well, no surprise, Katie Bates Diop and Caleb Wesson are up there. And, uh, the, the issue was Katie Bates Diop struggled early to start this game. It was the turnover transition layup that got him going two consecutive threes after that. And he's just shown an ability to score from anywhere on the floor. I, I think he's done a great job picking his spots. He doesn't force anything. He's patient. And then Caleb West, the same thing. For a young big to be as patient as he is, working in the post, maintaining possession, allowing the ball to go around the perimeter, much like Isaac Haas has been able to do. 
That's going to be called an illegal screen. Jay Sean Tate, that's his fifth personal foul. So a lot of things have gone right for Ohio State. That may be the first that's gone wrong as Tate heads to the bench. It's amazing, though, with, with that screen, you just can't move. If I was a coach, and I think I said this to Steve Peichel, I would ask every year, what's the what's the point of emphasis going to be this year? Because whatever the point of emphasis is going to be, I'm going to go right at that. Point of emphasis is cleaning up those offensive screens. Oh, man, I, I'm going to run through every screen as a defender. He might be set. Let me see. Just... I mean, I don't know, man. I've caught so much worse than that. Well, you also I this feel year, cheated, you, honestly, for all the elbows and knees I took. You can't have your legs wider than your shoulders this yeah, year. Yeah, no, I, I know. I mean, to me, that's silly, though. That's not a strong position. Is that strong position? So, so I'm going to stand there and allow dude to run into me, but keep my feet close together, you're out of your mind. <laughs> now, I'm not going to stick a knee out. You don't want to hurt anybody, but you want a strong enough base. C.J. Jackson has nine points after that last basket. The difference in this game was the first five minutes of the second half when Ohio State pushed the lead from 15 to 30. Rutgers made that surge with a 13 to 2 run, but they never really threatened. Kata Bates Diop picking up his second foul with 3.03 remaining. <laughs> Two shots for Omar Ruyi. Tonight, catch an all-new episode of BTN's original series, The Journey, featuring stories on Ohio State head coach Chris Holman and also Rutgers' Geo Baker. It's The Journey, Big Ten Basketball 2018, fueled by Gatorade tonight, 9.30 Eastern on BTN. Look forward to that. We talked about that the other evening at Happy Valley. Always fun to sit in and watch The Journey. Learn about new things that you didn't know about, guys and coaches. Good storytellers, those guys. They really are. It's not just like a production. It's, it's telling the story, you know, bringing some reality to what you're seeing here on the floor. Jackson, nice kick to the corner, and that opens the three-point door for Cam Williams. What is the three fingers tap in the head? I, I mean, is it? I don't really know what that means. Someone tweet at me, please. Tell me what that is. I got some help from Scarlett and Gray earlier. <laughs> Twitter's not all the bad thing, I guess, you know? Sometimes it's cyberbullying. Other days it's productive stuff like Scarlett and Gray. Sanders now has a Baker dozen after his mid-range jumper. Someone help me out with that one. What is the three fingers? I know what three goggles is, but... I think they're just saying, look, I made three points, and I'm going to tap myself in the head to show you. Two minutes to play. It's over simplified. Ohio State on their way to a 6 0 start. There's a no call. Bates D up. <laughs> Discussing earlier that block charge call that seems to always be called, but they're letting a few go here late, and then they do whistle that contact inside. I think you got to give credit to Steve Peichel and Rutgers. This was ugly in the first half. I mean ugly. They scored 15 points a shot, 19% from the field. So to have them come back, compete, that may sound ridiculous to say to cut it to 17, 20 points, but they competed to get back to this point. And I wouldn't say this is a moral loss, you know, moral victory, whatever you want to call it. But you, you at least have things that you could feel good about getting back to practice. Quite frankly, the defense hasn't been bad. Rutgers has been great defensively. Well, they're going to drop, though, to one and five in conference play, but we'll say it again. They've played by far the toughest schedule so far in conference action through six games. And on the other side, Ohio State's going to stay perfect. Chris Holtman's going to get to 6-0 in his first year as a Big Ten head coach. But you don't get there without a great staff, and he brought quite a few guys over from Butler. And 
including an assistant coach by the name of Terry Johnson, who was with Brad Stevens all the years that he was there. There's Terry in the gray suit with the legs crossed. So he's been to two Final Fours as an assistant coach. He had all those great years at Butler with Chris Holtman, and then when Holtman bolted, he left, and all he's done is win as an assistant. I was going to say, I mean, all I do is win, win, win. I mean, everywhere he's been, he's won at a high level. So why would you not bring a guy like that? I mean, part of that, winning, too, is contagious, you know, because it's an expectation that's set. So you want guys that have had that success. They understand you don't just have that success because you have great players. You have that sex success because you have great habits, because you, you take care of the things that you can take care of to put yourself in a position to win. That's what good culture really is. So, yes, that's a culture guy. That's an expectation guy. And a guy that understands what it takes to win at a high level. Yeah, Terry Johnson is one of the all-time great guys. He's a great recruiter, too. And they've already got some good ones coming in next year to Columbus. You know, and Dad Mata has always done it the right way. You know, something Dad Mata was always proud of. He recruited hard. He didn't do what a lot of things that are out there uh, that a lot of other programs have done recently. And I think you've got to be proud about that. And if you're Ohio State, you, you know you've got the right guy in that seat right now and you should feel good about the, the direction of this program it's like Rutgers should feel good about the direction of their program this team Michael the extension that he's got to keep him here final seconds of the game here to block in that and Eugene Omarugi taking out a little frustration you know it's hard for Rutgers too because you want guys to be frustrated with a loss but you don't want them to focus on that frustration you want to build upon the things that you do well Keep everyone engaged in the things that you can improve upon. Three to shoot here for Ohio State. Been really good teams that have lost six, seven straight in this conference. Minnesota last year, well, I think they started 0-6 in conference play. They certainly turned things around. So you've got to stay with that attention to detail with a positive mindset every time out in practice. Andre Wesson with the three-pointer, putting the icing on the cake. Final seconds. Chom, no, and that unfortunately is kind of indicative of how the night went for Rutgers. They shoot just 29% from the floor, and Ohio State cruises to a 68-46 to win. And the Buckeyes and Chris Holtman are off to a perfect 6-0 start in league play. U.S. Rutgers points on the season. Ohio State now 15 and 4 altogether, and Rutgers dropping to 11 and 8. After that tough loss at Michigan State, 68-46 defeat at home. Coming up at the top of the hour, Big Ten basketball and beyond right here 